trust God. So imagine heaven. While you are in this fire, look, look up and imagine heaven and you will find all the angels, all the saints cheering for you, rooting for you. Imagine heaven and you will find Jesus defending you before the Father, Him telling God, come on, give her one more chance. She can do this. She's got this. I am going to help her. I myself am going to defend her. Imagine heaven. From where you are standing right now, imagine heaven. And remember that you are not alone in this because you don't only have the people here on earth rooting for you, you have angels, you have saints, you have friends, you have families, you have all those people rooting for you. In Ecclesiastes 12.5, it says, remember him before you become fearful of falling and worry about the danger in the streets. Remember him, remember Jesus, and imagine heaven. That while you are suffering, on this earth, remember heaven because Jesus says soon, soon you'll be perfectly happy. Soon it won't hurt anymore. Soon I will rescue you for good. And you will never have to be broken again, but not here, not on this earth. Because in John 16, 33, God says, in this world, you will have many trials, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Micah 7, 7, let's declare it together. I am not going to give up. I am not going to leave Jesus. I am not going to forsake Jesus because he has not forsaken me. No, I am sticking around to see what God's about to do for me. My God, he is my God, will certainly hear me. For though I fall, I will rise again because Jesus is restorer. Because Jesus is our God of the resurrection and that's not just his resurrection, it's ours too. It's not just his healing, it's our healing too. It's not just the people in the Old Testament's redemption, it's our redemption too. And it's so great a redemption that you cannot lose it by messing up once or twice or thrice. Even if you mess up a million times, that redemption, that mercy is so great that every single time you go back to God, no matter how great that sin, He will welcome you back in open arms. God has broken down every single wall to get to you right now. And the only one left up is the one that you yourself are keeping up because you are scared. But God is so good that when you open that door, and give Jesus the slightest peek, he will, his light will shine. He will walk into your darkness and he will embrace you. He will meet you with his gentleness and warmth. Imagine heaven. And remember that soon, soon it won't be like this anymore. Imagine heaven. And then you will find your father who is ready to fight for you like a lion. God loves you so, so much. I have a Bible verse to change your day. This is from 2 Corinthians 4.16. It says, This is why we should never give up. This is why we shouldn't lose heart because though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed day by day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles that we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. God is at work. God is here. And He is able. And because He is good. You know what? I keep telling myself, don't forget that you are a Christian. Don't forget that you are a child of God. So you, because you are a child of God, your plans, most likely they're not going to go the way you hope for them to go. And that's okay. It's okay because that means they're going to go God's way. And that's so much better. Don't lose heart. There's this song from the verse I just read. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. You messed up yesterday? You slipped yesterday? That's okay. Try again. Because 2 Corinthians says, don't give up. Don't lose heart. And John 16, 33, Jesus admits to us, yes, you are going to have problems. You are going to have troubles, but take heart. I have already come overcome the world, so find peace in me. Life is going to be difficult, but you have a God who, will, who promises that He will supply you with strength. And He says He's not going to give up on you. God hasn't stopped working on those plans to make you prosper, on those plans to make you happy, so why are you giving up on Him? I know it's hard, and I know it's heavy, but we can find joy. Maybe our dreams and goals, we have to work to make them happen. But you don't have to chase joy. You don't have to chase peace. 
because it's yours to receive right now. Because your God is good. Even in the midst of all of these difficulties, God is still good. And even if God doesn't do everything you want Him to do for you, He is still good. Because that means He's going to do so much better. God loves you so much. You can trust Him. Have a great day. Again, don't lose heart. Jesus has already overcome. You have to hear about Romans 7, especially if you feel guilty and ashamed right now. Did you know that Paul says, I want to do what's right, but I can't. I don't want to do what's wrong, but I do it anyway. In Romans 7, Paul says, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't. Instead, I do what I hate. Instead, I do what is wrong. I agree that the law is good. I believe that God is good. I believe we should be following His, his rules, but I can't. I really want to do what is good, but I don't. I can't. I do what is wrong anyway. Because Paul says in Romans 7 verse 23, he says there is another power within me that is at war in my mind. This is sin. And so Paul goes, so who's going to free me? What am I supposed to do? I know the word of God. I read the Bible. I go to church. I preach. I serve the Lord. But for some reason, I'm still vulnerable to sin. Who's going to free me? And then Paul says in verse 25, thank God. Thank God because the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came here to save all of us. Paul struggled with sin too. And that's why Romans is such a beautiful book because it starts with Paul talking about how we should not sin because God hates sin. We're all sinners and so we have to stop sinning. But then in the middle of Romans, Paul admits it. I know I shouldn't be doing it. It's weird because I keep preaching about it. I keep writing letters to you about not sinning, but I still do it anyway. And you know what that means for you? You are not a bad Christian for struggling with sin. I know many times the world will throw the word hypocrite at us. You know Jesus hates hypocrites. So how is it possible that you keep reading your Bible but that you still struggle with sin? That is not what a hypocrite is. A hypocrite in the Bible, these are the people who claim to be so good, who claim to know God, who claim to follow God, who claim to represent God, but really they don't have a personal relationship with Him because they're knowing God. That's on the basis of the power that they want. It's not a personal relationship. You are not a hypocrite for knowing Jesus and still struggling with sin. You are not a hypocrite for wanting to go home to God, but your sin is stopping you. That doesn't make you a hypocrite, that makes you human. And that's a valid struggle, because even Paul struggled with it. But you know what? In the succeeding chapters in Romans, this is Romans 7, where Paul admits, I want to do what's right, but I can't, I don't, I still struggle with sin. He talks about God's mercy. That you just call into the name of Jesus. You just say, Jesus, please help me, and Jesus will come, ready to have mercy on you, because He loves you because He wants to help you. That's why discipleship is a call to be humble. You're not a hypocrite for struggling with sin while trying to know God. Jesus knows you are struggling. Jesus knows you're having a hard time. He came to set you free. So call out to Him. Close your eyes. I know you probably had a long day, so just close your eyes. And imagine that you are in darkness. Or maybe you don't really have to imagine it because you literally are in darkness Maybe life has been really hard. And as you feel all of that heaviness, all that negativity around you in that darkness, you see that tiny light. And for some reason, when your life was going great, you never really noticed that light. But now that it's all dark, you see that light shining bright. And it's not much of a light, but it shines. So you go to it. And the closer you get to it, the brighter it gets. The more your darkness fades away. Open your eyes. That's how it is with God. Sometimes we're so busy with life that we forget to pay attention to His light because there are so many other things in our, in our lives that have our attention. And so I know this doesn't really make sense, but it's possible for you to find joy while you are in this darkness. Because this darkness means that your eyes will be opened to that light. That you will be so sure that because you are in this darkness, the only light you will see is the light of the Lord. And the light of Jesus is the one that saves. The light of Jesus is the one that transforms. You can trust His promise to save. And God said He'd never abandon you. He meant now. When He said He'd never forsake you, 
he was talking about this exact moment where you feel like it's, it's useless, it's pointless for you to try to be okay. Because when you find that light in that darkness, even if it's such a small, small ray of light, it's still light. And what God does, He doesn't take away that darkness. He lets that light shine. And when you go far away from Him, that light gets smaller. So you know what to do. Go to that light. Open your Bible. Listen to worship songs. Go to church. Have some quiet time. Do your devotionals. And talk to Jesus. It doesn't have to be a long, fancy prayer that'll, that will make you stand out before the Lord. It just has to be from your heart. Because you already stand out to Him. You are His beloved. And because you are saved by grace, when God looks at you, He doesn't see your sin. He sees Christ. He says the blood of Jesus that has already cleansed you completely. You are forgiven and set free. So as you are in this darkness, close your eyes, feel that darkness, and pay attention to the light that I am certain you will find. Because that's just how God works. He has never failed anyone. He won't fail you. Really quick, before you go to bed, can I pray for you? Father God, I pray for all of the people watching this video today, God, because life has been really difficult. Because life has been feeling so hopeless, so God, please be hope. God, everything has been so heavy and dark, so God, please be light. I ask that you teach us to surrender all our worries and all our anxieties to you just because we want to find you but we don't know how. We want to go back to you but we don't know how because there are so many crazy things going on, God. It's so hard to pay attention to your voice. So I beg you, please let your voice be the loudest that we will hear. God, we don't know how to return home, so teach us how. God, we don't know how to be strong, so be our strength. God, we don't know how to have faith, so show us your heart. Because we need you to be our Father more than ever right now, God. In First John, you said that perfect love casts out all fear. And so I ask that you will open our eyes to that truth. That you're not just talking about our fear of the darkness. You are talking about our fear of approaching you, of going to light, God. Because we are scared that we're going to regret leaving our old lives. God, help us remember. That when we are scared to have faith in you, when we are scared to surrender to you, God, you will send your perfect love. And that's not the worldly love that will make us feel safe and then eventually leave us. No, it's the perfect love. The kind that will send us assurance, the kind that is gentle, the kind that will send us security, God, so we will not have to fear following you. Jesus, I ask you, be our light, be our hope, be our strength, God. And be our best friend because Jesus more than ever we want to have a relationship with you Jesus I pray that to everyone watching this you will grant them peace not the worldly peace that is temporary and could go away and could disappear with the slightest inconvenience no God your peace the kind that stays the kind that overpowers and silences all the negativities in our lives God in the name of Jesus, I declare, God, that because you are good, you are going to set us free from all this bondage, God, even if we don't deserve it. God, we don't deserve it. Who are we, Jesus, that you came here to save us? But for some reason, you didn't, so tonight we celebrate that. And I declare, it, God, that we are going to receive your joy because you are good. We are going to receive your light because you are faithful. We are going to receive your healing because you are our restorer. Jesus, you are helper, shepherd, you are good, and you are more than enough. You are righteous, and you came here to set free. God, we don't deserve you, but just one word from your mouth will change everything for us. God, please have mercy. Have mercy. And one verse I really wish we'd talk about more often is Hebrews 4, 15 to 16, because it says, Jesus, our great priest, understands us. He knows how weak we are. He knows that we sometimes want to do wrong things. We can ask him to help us when we need help. We know that he will forgive us and he will be kind to us in whatever we may need. Because I think there's this whole weird generalization and expectation that when you become a Christian, you're automatically going to hate doing bad things. And so I think that's why, that's why a lot of us have a hard time going back to God. 
so I want to speak up on this I don't know if it's if, if it will make sense but this part where it says Jesus knows that sometimes we want to do wrong things because we don't really talk about it enough that sometimes we struggle in rejecting sin it's not just that oh we know it's wrong and but we have a hard time not doing it sometimes we ha- even though deep down we know it's wrong things don't feel wrong to us and sometimes we want to do those wrong things Sometimes conviction is just not there at all. And we should be having conversations about what our struggles are as Christians because I don't want people to think that, oh, I know Jesus now, but then somehow I still like to do wrong things, so I probably don't know Jesus right now. Just because you struggle with sin doesn't mean that God doesn't want to get to know you. It doesn't mean that you're not important to God. It doesn't mean that you are not meant to know God. Because sometimes, that's just how our trials are. It's not limited to us not knowing how to not sin. It's sometimes we won't even recognize sin. Sometimes everyone will tell us it's wrong, and we will still want to do it. And it's not because you're a bad person. It's because Satan is the king of deception. And so I really wish people would recite Hebrews 4, 15 to 16 more often because this verse says that Jesus understands not just our weaknesses, not just, not just us slipping and when we want to do better, sometimes we don't even want to do better. Sometimes we are contented living in our sin. And that's a valid struggle. Jesus came here to save you from that too. It doesn't make you any less of a Christian when your struggle is the lack of conviction, when your struggle is your lack of repentance. Because Jesus knew that there would be people who would have a hard time with repentance. Until now, I struggle with that all the time. And it just because you have been walking with God for a long time does not mean you will be spared of this trial. Because the devil works hard and he attacks all of us. You are not alone in this fight. And Jesus is so great that He understands you. He still wants to help you. You can go to Him. God loves you.